Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus. Once again, joining you for another learning and teaching session. Okay, so before we get to start, I'd like to ask you to join us in this mission. We've done this for the past two years, and this year we want to increase our number of scholars. So our goal is to provide free NCLEX RNA application and review to 100 nurses. To help us achieve this, I ask you to please just do this very simple thing. Watch and finish the ads in our videos. And thank you very much for doing that in advance. I would also would like to make this public advisory that Dr. Ray Agapos, that's me, and the mentors of the Ray Agapos system are not part of another review center named Gapos Review Academy or Gapos Review. So if you want the Ray Gapos Review System, please do look for our company name. And that is Ray A. Gapos Review System. That's the name of our system under the International Center for Advanced Review and Training. So if you don't see any one of us in your class, that simply means that's at a Ray Gapo system class. So at the Ray Gapo system, your future is bright because you are being taught by well-trained mentors on the functional concepts method, which is very unique to the Ray Gapo system. So on to our next generation NCLEX RN case number 10. And this time around, before we get to start, I'd like to shout out my message of congratulations to Ms. Nenita Sangye from the Baguio Central University who passed the New York Next Generation NTEX RN test um, last July 27, 2024. Congratulations and my hats off to you, Mom Nenita. So let's learn from her success recipe. This is what she has to share with us. Big thank you to Sir Ray Gapus, um, the mentors, IT, at sa lahat ng staff, to all the staff. I appreciate the time and effort for giving us the quality lectures that I need to pass the NGN exam. Thank you for the mantra, I believe I'm next, at nangyari nga po. It became possible. I'm still overwhelmed with this new milestone in my career. Ngayon sure na ako na babalik sa New York as a USRN. Wow, congratulations, you're going back to New York as a registered nurse. The think first is strategy. So that's the first on his success recipe list. Quick Fix Bootcamp, the Core Shells, Comprehensive Review, and the Old and New NCLEX 311 book. All of these, and she says, sulit sa review ko. So what she's saying is that she really made use of all these things in her preparations. So highly recommended review center and well-equipped simulation room. She loves it. To my partner, family, relatives, and friends, I made it. So once again, that's Ms. Nenita Sangye from Baguio Central university okay so let's talk about histoplasmosis and before we move on to the details this is actually what miss denita sang is saying the new edition of my book nplex rn311 the next generation quick fix edition and from a feedback of another passer miss net Pantasan, i asked her which part of a review helped you the most and she says Sir, quick fix at bootcamp po, plus the old and new 311 book. Lalo na yung new version ng 311 complete package, sir, and dun lahat. So what she's saying is that everything is there. And for those of you who already have a copy of this book, I think it was at 50% off during its um, launching sale a month ago. Now, these are the pages that I would want you to focus on. And for those of you who still would want to buy it, it's still at a 20% promo discount. Okay, so on to our discussion. So when you speak of histoplasmosis, what are the things that you have to remember? So let's begin with a functional concept. Remember, a functional concept could be a word, a phrase, a sentence, or even an entire paragraph that gives you a sense of direction on how you should think when you see a specific condition, and it gives your mind a sense of direction on how to deconstruct the questions eventually. So let's begin. Histoplasmosis is caused by a fungus. It's called Histoplasma capsulatum. It is also called cave disease or spelunkers lung disease. Now, spelunkers are P. 
people who love to explore caves. So this is the reason why there are at least for histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis is a fungus that's usually transmitted to humans when they inhale um, the soil or the bird manure or bat manure that they've been exposed to in caves. So which simply means that this is primarily transmitted through inhalation of the fungus, okay? So it has no human-to-human -human transmission. Therefore, remember that we only need to implement, according to the Centers for Disease Control, your standard precautions, okay? When we take care of these types of patients. Now, pulmonary manifestations are the hallmark of histoplasmosis. Now, when you speak of pulmonary manifestations, we think of cough. And since this is a form of an infection, it's a fungal infection, so you also have fever. Now, when you think of cough and fever, there's a very, very common pulmonary disease, and that's your tuberculosis. So it could be alike in terms of the signs and symptoms. However, you have to focus on the data that would tell you that the client could have been exposed to the fungus for you to be able to identify that it's histoplasmosis. So therefore, if the client has had a history of cave exploring or mountain climbing or going to areas where there is an increase in histoplasmosis and eventually they develop fever and cough, chances are that could be related to your histoplasmosis. So manifestations of histoplasmosis can include, remember histo, headache, increased temperature, fever, shortness of breath, and sweating. Now, this is very, very like your tuberculosis, tiredness. And then you have your observable bumps or rash on the lower legs, which could not be present in a client with tuberculosis. Now, in clients with histoplasmosis, they develop complications like hepatosplenomegaly or bleeding peptic ulcer. And if it goes into um, the central nervous system and eventually the bone marrow, the client could develop um, decreased red blood cells. So, which simply means a client could have anemia or even um, bone marrow suppression that could eventually increase the risk of the client to develop other types of infection as well. So the gold standard for the diagnosis of histoplasmosis involves culture isolation of the fungus involving either the urine. So you would be asked to either gather a urine specimen when the client is being screened or sputum specimen, or even your bone marrow sample. So other tests include your biopsy, x-ray, CT scan, bronchoscopy, and of course your bronchoalveolar lavage in which um, the lungs is actually washed and the washing is usually used as the specimen for the identification of the presence of the fungus in the client's pulmonary system. Okay, so treatment of histoplasmosis involves the use of antifungals like, remember, ICA, itraconazole, corticosteroids, and amphotericin B. Now, you have to remember the fact that since this is a fungal infection, unlike tuberculosis, your antibiotics won't work. And not all antifungal drugs could help the patient. Like, for example, ketoconazole is not indicated for the client because it has the potential to worsen the development of hepatotoxicity or hepatosplenomegaly in a client with histoplasmosis. So remember also that the infection can go away on its own even without treatment if the client has a healthy immune system. However, since histoplasmosis is one of the common opportunistic infections in clients who are immunocompromised or who are suffering from full-blown AIDS, it's important to note that if the client is HIV positive, then they need additional treatment. Okay, so let's apply what we just learned to our case number 11. A 37 year old male comes to the emergency department due to cough and night sweats. Now pay particular attention to the cough and night sweats. So this should give you a clue that this could be potentially either tuberculosis or histoplasmosis, read through until the last 
letter of the case. On admission interview, he admits to have gone mountain climbing and exploring the Seneca Caverns in Bellevue, Ohio. Now take note, Ohio is one of the areas where histoplasmosis is usually um, affecting clients, especially those who love to explore the caves or your caverns. And they have um, a cavern system there where a lot of tourists would usually go there to explore it. So we now have that risk factor that could tell you that this could be histoplasmosis. So the client admits to being HIV positive. His current CD4 cell count is 100. Definitely that's very low. Um, usually clients who have healthy um, immune system could have a CD4 cell count from 800 to 1,000. When the CD4 count, CD4 cell count goes below 300, that would mean definitely that a client is developing immunosuppression. So therefore, given the clue that the client has cough, the client has night sweats, the client has gone mountain climbing and exploring the Seneca Caverns, and of course the client admits to being HIV positive, this should give you the clue that the client could be having histoplasmosis. So the question now is, which of the following medications is not used for treatment of histoplasmosis. The key word here is the word not. So itraconazole definitely is the antifungal that's used in the treatment of histoplasmosis. So is your ampotherism B and of course your prednisone, but not your ketoconazole because it could potentially worsen hepatosplenomegaly or may cause hepatotoxicity in a client with histoplasmosis. So the answer definitely is number four ketoconazole. Why? Remember, once again, may potentially cause or it can potentially worsen hepatotoxicity or hepatosplenomegaly in a client who is suffering from histoplasmosis. So I'd like to invite everyone to join our hundreds of thousands and passers of passers from more than 33 countries from all over the world who have been using the Ray Gapus system. Now, the second issue that you have to consider when you're preparing for the next generation NCLEX RN is how do you study? So you have to learn how to use technology. And at the Ray Gapo system, our learning tools are uniquely created based on a Gen Z learner characteristics. And our tools are published by internationally renowned publishers in the world. Okay, so we also have our own learning management system. We call it the Regap Score Shells. So it covers all the subjects on the test. You have your safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care, physiological adaptation, one, two, and three. And of course, your psychosocial integrity and reduction of risk potential. So all the topics are covered in the core shell. So these are all included in our system. And the third and the most important of all the requirements for you to be able to develop a success recipe for your NGN test, you have to be in a conducive environment that should keep your focus. At the Ray Gapo system, we have our own simulation room for NGN items, and we keep our class to a comfortable number of learners. So I'd like to invite you to join me in my next generation NPLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NPLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499. And you can have a choice of either live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, NGN strategies and sample questions by Dr. Gapus Plus, the quick fix sessions with me. Remember you can opt to have a morning or an afternoon class or a weekend class or weekend classes, these are all available. So give us a call at 0906 6, uh, sorry, 0906 201 Once again, 0906 201 9383. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, at your service. See you in my next video and good luck to our test takers within the week.